I don't know. He'll be fired up, though. I don't know. I don't Road know game. if Iowa State's going to be a test. Let's get it going. Welcome back to Two Homers and a Realist. This is the preview pod for the SMU game. The Sooners are 1-0. and We are headed into Game 2. Supposed to be a bigger test against the Ponies. The, the Dallas Highland Park Ponies. Mustangs. We'll see how good they are. I'm Steve. Lucas. Connor. Jay. So we are here out under the stars enjoying some, some cigars and some... Some bourbon and some beers and some, what do you got there? You had uh, I don't know, but it was tequila. Smooth. Was it smooth? Was it? Smooth it tequila? Yeah. That's what I get. I, I only have it the smooth, smooth stuff. It was. Well, let's talk, about, let's talk about the game ahead and our thoughts on it. Um, the Sooners are looking really, really good. They're coming off of a gigantic win against Arkansas State. Now, before anyone laughs at when I say gigantic win, 73 to nothing, looked good from soup to nuts, every aspect of the the game we have not seen a, a performance like that as we mentioned in, in the post game in years and so it's it it's exciting even though it was against a lesser opponent we still think there's a lot of talent out there so there's a lot of positives to take away but this week we get a little better test we have a team that's definitely got a higher level of talent they've got um higher dollar signs attached to them the fact that they're smu because that's you know a very expensive school High enough dollar signs to take a what is it a a ten year eleven uh, year eleven year <laughs> non deferral pay raise no right, no TV payments, payments. Yeah. none or deferred or what was it it was it was some type of they're taking less money for going to the ACC um, we'll see if that's a that's a pretty interesting question of if that how that whole thing evolves and you've got Clemson who lost spectacularly um, in the Monday night game. You got S- FSU. You got Florida State, who's really rolling. It seems like, if I'm fans of those programs, I'm li- really looking for an exit. Um, Miami's got to be thinking the same thing. I'd be scared to be stuck in a league like that, especially with these new guys coming in that just don't seem like they're uh, add a lot to the to the or package. just so you don't have to travel to Timbuktu. The name yeah. of the conference West is Coast. literally the Atlantic Coast Conference. So tell me, and they're adding two Pacific teams. Yeah, tell me about those teams <laughs> on the Pacific. I I wasn't good. No, I actually was real good at geography. Yeah, I was real good at geography. And too. I think that doesn't match it, at they all. Should, they should change to the CCC, the, the Coast to Coast Conference. <laughs> yeah, CCCP so. maybe. Since Florida they're not State, taking money, they sound pretty communistic yeah, to exactly. me. I, I think Florida State either proposed or approved a a large. Um, a large monetary improvement to to Doak Walker or Doak Camp, Doke, Doke Stadium, the Doak Stadium that they that they play in. <laughs> Doak Campbell. Doak Campbell. Campbell yeah. yeah. Doak Walker. Yeah. Doak yeah, Campbell the Stadium. Running back award. Um, I don't remember. It was two hundred something million. I believe. It was, it was a money. Why aren't the guys named Doak anymore? You got Doak Campbell Stadium. That's you a got pretty Doak cool name. Walker Award. Yeah. I don't, I don't know any Dokes. I want. I want a Doak. I, I want a Doak on the I team. I would name my next child Doak. No, <laughs> don't. Don't do that. I'm not saying you should do it. You can do it. No thanks. There you go. Adopt. Anyways, the ACC, it's, it's interesting. SMU headed there. but uh, So let's yeah. talk about SMU. Um, I, I'm a little bit concerned, I think. When the line came out at whatever, 16, 17, it's dropped to 15 and a half. Money's obviously flowing in for SMU. Um, I don't know. That's, that, that's a little concerning. It looks to me like it might be free money, but that is, is like a sucker bet sometimes. So what do we think is going on there? What do you guys think about the game? I think that Vegas just doesn't think the the people in Vegas betting in Vegas are thinking that this was last week was a flash in the pan. Um, we played a you know super lower level team, and after last year's results, that they want to they're not believers yet. They want to they want to see it happen, and that's why the spread was so low. Yeah, Vegas is no different than the rest of us trying to pick games. They're still trying to figure out. They're just way who's better. Who's real? At it. Who's not? Yes, they are much better at it. Um, we'll get to that later. Uh, yeah, just trying to figure <laughs> out who's good, who's not, who's who's real, who's not, and so their lines are just for that. And then they set it at something, and they, they let the public, you know, weigh in their on choice. it. And I think it's fair. I mean, I think OU of of last year, even I mean, even look the last five years or so, um, coming off a big victory and you know laying laying a proverbial egg. So. Uh, I mean, what was it a couple of years ago? We we go and we whoop up on Western Michigan or something like that, seventy-six to zero, and then come back the next week and and 
have to know, get coached. Have a good game against Nebraska. Have a really, really no. tough game against Nebraska. No, 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 no. No, you're, you're, you're confusing two different years. The Western Carolina was against was Lincoln Riley's last year. Yeah, two years ago is what I was. Talking yeah, about. and that wasn't. Oh, yeah, was Nebraska that Nebraska was after? Home. Nebraska was right. Well, yeah, we and yeah. that was a game that, that was, was kind of tight. So yeah, that's what he's talking about. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying we he's whipped saying up we, on Nebraska. We blew no, one no, no. It's like we, we blew them out, and I think, and then the next week we have the expectation that we're going to roll and Nebraska, it was tight. and it was yeah. a tight game. So I yeah. think, I think people are adjusting for those expectations. Struggle even in Vegas and nationally. I mean, I think there's a reason we didn't see a lot of OU recognition over the past few days which given again it was Arkansas State but uh, Steve to your point at the very beginning of the pod I don't care who you're playing putting up 73 points and dominating the way we've dominated the thing that kind of strikes me and, and Colorado obviously dominates the narrative uh, with a couple of other games that happened but uh, we're on an ESPN we're on ESPN the other day and there's still not a whole lot of just, hardly at all like uh, nothing just coverage not at all after the game so um, I think people are reserving their expectations um, and and Rightfully you know, so. Rightfully so. Right. That, so. that was seventy three without trying in the fourth quarter. Yep. That right. Was, that was out trying. That was eleven drives for the rest of right? the third quarter. It was seventy three right. with a second string quarterback who started the second half. Yep. And he, he didn't just hand the ball off, but he didn't exactly run the full offense at the same time. They passed only when they had to, and I think the maybe most impressive thing is the other side of that score of zero, because when you have second and third stringers in there and fourth. you. And hit fourth yeah. stringers. I mean, there were there. I mean, you got in the game for a while, I Jay. They, they called you down there, and it, when you're still able not to just hold them to zero points, but to really keep them out of threatening position. I was one of the two non-scholarship players to get on. That the field. was really impressive what you did. They didn't they even played make the red zone. Eighty-seven mm-hmm. players. They didn't make one. They one did not. Well, well, I don't was, think they got past the thirty. And that was they had was, two missed field goals because I think those were outside the from, thirty from deep. Yeah. yeah. So even though they got close, which is yards. totally different than what we've seen. Year in and year out. I mean, remember how many times a team would get into the 30, and you'd say, well, if we get them to third and 15, it's a guaranteed touchdown. You know, we're going to push them backwards, and then they're going to score. And two things and I sure heard, enough, I mean, they did something not. that even Ted Roof was able to recognize in, in his press conference a couple of days ago, um, A, recognizing just the intensity uh, across the board from the ones to the fours, and then B, um, recognizing the guys on the sidelines saying protect the shutout. Yeah, the um, accountability. You know, right? having yeah the accountability not only with the coaching staff but with within the team and within the players itself, having ones and twos mm-hmm. uh, yelling at the threes and fours who are yeah. going out there protect that shutout. And That's what I heard from multiple sources that it was an engaged look um, across the board where everyone deep into that game was very concerned about the game. They weren't taking their pads off, celebrating, talking to their girlfriends. Culture change. They were, the culture change was stark. They wanted this. They wanted it for everybody, and that was a really big deal. Lucas loves the culture. Uh, yep. I'm, I'm here for the culture. Culture is important. No, and I think that all of that, I, I do think it plays dividends. I think the one example I go back to that, that specific kind of uh, concept is, I remember late in the third um, Jackson Arnold's in the game, and, and it's a, I don't know if it's a second or a third down, but it was a marginal distance, and we, we convert, and I see Jaron Kanick, a first-string linebacker, engaged in the game, celebrating, very visibly celebrating a first down that we got on offense, where he could be sitting under the fans, sitting in the shade, yep. um, you know. Waiting for the party wait, tonight. Yeah, waiting for the party, thinking about what he's going to be doing next. No, he's, he's up front and center celebrating with his entire team um, and, and driving that kind of just mindset yeah, forward. Yeah, think and back I love that. to Lincoln's last year. I can't remember the game, but Someone there were players. Tulane. Was it, oh, it was a Tulane it was game. Tulane. They're taking their equipment off. In a game that was not in hand. Tulane is coming back against us, and the yeah. coaches are over there being like, dude, Get your shoulder pads and helmet back on. Can you imagine if you took that off in front of Brent Venables? Brent no. Venables may kick someone off a team. You, you might not ever play. Kick off the team, there'd be there'd be a homicide be, investigation. Yeah. 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 I mean, Even it's not going to happen. Yeah. So I do love the culture change, and it gives me hope that what they'll do going forward, game in and game out, will be this isn't enough. We need to do better. We need to get better. We need to continue what we've already built, not be self satisfied with having achieved a really good outcome in one game. And with the depth, it, it can truly become the next man up mentality. Yeah, for sure. Someone, you got to be watching your back. Someone's struggling out there, and you, you're not going to be on the field because yep. someone else is ready to go. And you know and this coaching staff, 
I believe, is willing to make a change and willing to, to, I mean, if for no other reason, if you're out there lollygagging, they're looking for an opportunity to replace you. They're going to find someone. It's hard to quantify the, the stuff that we're talking about for general fans or, or even us ourselves that are obnoxious super, super fans. fans. <laughs> but when you have players who know they have a position, it just changes how they play, how mm -hmm. they act, how they do everything. Mm -hmm. And to now, when you have legitimate, more talented players behind you, less experienced, right, less knowledgeable, but you have to play your butt off. Yep. There are guys behind you that you know are better than Chomping you. At They're the bit. going to be better than you. Yeah, I mean, exactly. this, They're not team better than you guys. yet. Yeah. It's Team 129. No, but when's the we last know, time? Yeah. We're, pumping. We're, the at last two, time? we're at 212 degrees as well. Yeah. No, but truly, when's the last time I agree. where you went into a, a game or a season and losing a player at a position wasn't devastating. Wasn't like, oh my God, who are, are we, we going to put do? in? What yep. are we going to do? Yep. And it's not, and it's not a matter of, well, anybody can be that bad. It's there's and, somebody you know, else who can be that good. But even then, we're even then we're pretty good. Right. But I mean, look at something. I, uh, something I, I notice in the maybe the player that I've really enjoyed seeing clips of and, and hearing about. Someone we have not even taught, we didn't even remotely talk about in uh, the preseason or anything like that is a linebacker like Kip Lewis, who you think is going to be down on the depth chart. Is, he's is, one of the first off the bench, and he's one of the first off the bench, and is not only that, he's making an impact on the game. I, I rewatching the game yesterday, and. It, Kip Lewis doesn't even go and make a play or a tackle. He's in the correct spot, and I see Venables run up to him, like very explicitly celebrate with him and basically just give him those those kudos of, hey, man, this is exactly what we want to do. And that's a guy that we, like, for me, I didn't have on my radar as someone who's going to make an impact, but you see someone like a Stutzman go, either go down or is just having a bad day or something like that, you do have those guys who can rotate in, and it's not just at that spot. I think we are, <clears throat> quote-unquote, I, they keep using the the term um, competitive depth. We have that depth at so many different positions this year. Yeah, I think the defense is still tinkering with <clears throat> what to do with our depth because There's you guys have on the so field. many secondary players. Yeah, where do you put them? And what linebackers. <laughs> like, I wonder if you can even see a week to week based on opponent strength. Like what linebackers mm -hmm. are going to play? Yeah, I, I bet you do see a lot of that challenging, what and I bet Cheetah's they're challenging. Gonna play. I bet they're challenging in practice to make sure that a guy knows this is not determined yet. You go out and show me what you got, and see where you can can elevate it. To me, the positive spin I'm going to give it is the opposite of last year, where we're in a downward spiral and you're in desperation mode and you're just trying to fill the gaps. Whereas now. You're trying to look and say, wow, we can build off of this. And now all of a sudden I've got a luxury of figuring out somewhere else to put this talent because I've got this, this position group is completely where I want it to be. I legitimately feel, because this could be a super homer take, our second string this year is equal to our first string defense last year. If you, if you just went entire second string right now against SMU, it would be no worse than our defense last year. That's be interesting. Pretty, It'd be an interesting one to one, I, but I think I would agree with you. I think I tend to agree. I mean, just the fact that we're all considering that tells you where we are right now. That's a legitimate question. I mean, our third string, our third string safety, would be starting over Justin Broyles. Oh, ah, yeah. yeah. No, no offense to the kid. Right. But it's That's just, just where, we're where we're at and where we've gotten to. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say one of my first what to watch for is in keeping with this, and that is. I'm going to say hold the line or hold the lines. So keep getting yardage in chunks and improve upon that. I want to see that offensively at the point of attack there. And then defensively, get pressure on D. Be able to do what you've been doing. I mean, obviously a shutout is amazing, and we're not expecting a shutout this week. But if you can continue to get pressure, continue to build on that, and hopefully – actually get more pressure we'll, we'll dovetail that in a minute with another question from a listener but if we can get that that consistent line play both sides of the ball that's one of the things i'm looking for to see if we can continue into week two build improvements on what we've already achieved i'd like to see <clears throat> defensively this week 
Uh, looking at SMU stats from last week, they were 7 of 19 on third down, which against Louisiana Tech doesn't seem very good. No. And they were 3 of 4 on fourth downs. So I'm interested to see how – see, last week Butch Jones really didn't, didn't even think about – Fourth downs. Fourth downs. No. He was. He wanted to know, get out of there. When they had a lot of fourth and fours. And they didn't have a lot of but, fourth and ones. Right. They didn't have very many fourth or and ones. And they weren't on our half the field most of the game. So it was definitely tough for him to consider going for fourth and four from his own 40. So there was a lot of quick, you know, we're going to go punts and stuff like that. So with SMU, I expect them to have more, you know, fourth and twos, maybe at midfield and. They proved last week that they were willing to go for it. So that's going to be interesting to me. That is interesting. That's a good point. And then we had a listener question. If from I'm them, not to interrupt your listener question, real quick, though. If I'm them and I'm a fan, I'm disappointed if you're not going for it on fourth. Because what else, What do you have to lose? Well, last week especially. With Butch Jones, that's like, your chance. you're down by yeah. 60. Go ahead. And, and it's fourth and two You're just on the, trying to save embarrassment. But if you're yeah. SMU, depending on the game, you know, all yeah. the details of where you are in the game, Go ahead and go for it. Right. But Jones, what they had players dropping left and right. He was he was they all really about did. getting out of that That's game. That's true. They had they had to worry about injuries. Shout yeah. out to Jerry Schmidt. Uh, I saw that we didn't have any players cramping up during the game. Nope. So I did. We looked so it, it freaking was, in shape. It man. was r- ridiculously hot. And they were dropping like full eyes. And on we their didn't side. have any issues in that department. That's a great point. So that was nice. Listener uh, question. Listener question from Mike, and he said he thinks SMU runs more of a pro style offense. And they won't get the ball out as fast as their Arkansas State did. Will that give our D line a better chance to get to the passer? Will they get to the quarterback more? If if we see a lot of what we saw last week, where we got a little pressure but not much, we only had one sack. Will we see more defensive line pressure this game? What's your take, Lucas? Initially, I'm hopeful, but last week didn't give me a lot of. You know, so we had we had get a lot to go off of. We had one sack, and I think we had six tackles for loss last week. Um, some of some of those obviously running back, and we had I some think pressure. Had the, there was a lot screens. of like one hand and, length away. Yeah, <clears throat> and yeah, I, I, one instance where Bothroy gets his hand up, hits the quarterback's arm, and the the pass falls short on third down. Um, from everything I've heard and and listened to over the past few days, sounds like SMU likes going down the field and stretching it out over the top. Um, I think they had a, a couple of big plays last week. Uh, so if if that quarterback is holding the ball longer, it will be interesting to see. I, I would love to see. Obviously, we all want to see that, right? We want to see yeah. that that dominance up front. Steve, to your point, on, on the defensive side as well, that dominance up front where we are pushing either the quarterback backwards or out of the pocket and, and just getting that pressure. I'd love to see – if we're flushing him out of the pocket, if we're getting that pressure off the edge like we've been lacking. Um, so once we flush the pocket, do we have the guys there that can close close out? Um, but, I mean, that's going to be key, right? I think everyone wants to see that. I think everyone is – that was a question mark after last week just because they were getting the ball out so quick. Um, what does our pressure look like when that quarterback holds the ball a little bit longer? So I, I'm hopeful. I think we have guys who can do it. I definitely think we're more set up to do it this year than we were last year. Yeah. Um, so now, now go do it. And actually having four guys on line of scrimmage a lot more, right. it mm-hmm. seems like. So. To me, schematically, best case scenario would be they think they're going to try and send receivers deep. There's so much pressure. They have to shift to quick throws because I'm, as a defensive coordinator myself, I would prefer that they have to get the, out the ball quickly and they're not going down the field and they have to right. nickel and dive it all the way. Right. So that's to me, that's best case scenario. They, they're going to test and see if their line can hold, if the receivers can get open. And if they can, then it could be a much more competitive game than we think. If they can't and they have to start getting the ball out quick, that's just a bonus. But also us. with this defensive backfield we've got, we've got dudes that can make plays. So do we get a chance to bait them into throwing the deep ball and we have a safety, you know, Billy Bowman runs underneath and intercepts it. Or, yeah. you know, Pearson's so menacing looking that they don't throw his way in it. All goes towards well. There's two ways Gentry that Williams, that, and he's a great pass defender. Let's say yeah, two ways that that goes in our favor if we're effective in doing what we need to do. One would be you're throwing off the timing of the play, and so you come up and put the pressure on him so that he's throwing that ball sooner than he really wants to. A four man pressure, and yeah, and that's when a Bowman or someone can either make a play on a ball, maybe intercept it. The other is a coverage sack. 
and I would love to see some coverage yeah. sacks. That would be tremendous to know we're able to pull that off. I remember the few times we were able to do that last year. We're very excited about it. It'd be great to see us consistently be able to get him into a coverage sack situation. In pursuit, yeah. I think, and I think that last point that you made, Lucas, kind of segues into one of my two watch fours this week. Our strength does seem to be our defensive backfield right now, which is crazy to think because it hasn't been that in a, in a long time. Um, assuming we're getting the pressure as well, but still, if if SMU is going to try to stretch it out against us, I am I am excited to see what our DBs can do um, when they're trying to make those plays. I mean, I want to see someone go up and make a play. I want to see those pass breakups or those competitive uh, defensive moments that – have been lacking in the past because I think we are built for that right now. Um, we saw a couple of times last week where there was some intermediate passing that, that Arkansas State found in between our linebackers and our safeties. Um, I'd love to see some guys come up and make a play on those. I mean, we mentioned it in our post game, Canick was inches away from making a play on a ball over the middle that went for one of Arkansas State's longest plays of the day uh, because he couldn't get a hand on it or because he couldn't make that interception. I want to see those plays um, go in our favor, and I want to see guys making those plays. And then secondly on my, on my list, I'll go back uh, to the offensive side of the ball. Gabriel had an amazing day the other day, three incompletions. Um, I, w I did go back and looked at the incompletions that he had. Uh, one competitive ball to Farouk uh, in the end zone that could have been caught, was well defended. Another basically throwaway pass to Farouk again in the end zone uh, that probably just should have been thrown. And the incompletion to, to pet away on a screen. Um, outside of that, I want to see him. I want to see him get the ball out in front of his receivers, and well, I want to see him recognize. Well, two things that don't show up in that stat, or or at least two, are two incompletions that didn't count as incompletions because of pass interference. Exactly. That if he puts that ball in the right spot, it's if he a touchdown. puts the ball in the right spot, both, it's both a touchdown. Yeah. Underthrown both. And times. if he if he is playing against a better defensive backfield, it's probably just an interception. Mm -hmm. Because that, that player is better, and, and you cannot make that mistake against a lot of the other guys out there, especially when we get deeper into the season like Texas. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's a little bit concerning. And for as strong uh, as his arm is, he puts so much air into the ball on some of those deep balls where it's like you don't need that much air to let your guy go get the ball. I mean, I think that first, that first drive where he throws Andre Anthony over the field, he overthrows him just a little bit. But he throws it well enough where Anthony can at least go make the catch and make the play. I want to see more of that where it's, hey, I'm yeah. going to go give my guy a chance. I'm not going to underthrow it and hope and for the no P.I. no chance for anything or, else. Yeah. Even yeah. after he's getting his jersey held, Ex he's still making yeah. the play. Because exactly. he threw it just far enough out in front. Yeah, yeah. and it was, it was such a great – yeah, and if he doesn't get his jersey held there, yeah, it's, either it got, is a touchdown Our guy probably. catches it or nobody catches it. Right, yeah. exactly. So I, I, want to see, I want to see better timing and better cadence from him because I do think he has that talent, and I think – I don't know if he doesn't see the guy, or I don't know if he just second guesses himself and wants to make sure it's wide open before he throws the pass. Yeah. But that's one thing that we got so spoiled with with Baker and Kyler. They were throwing those dudes open. Yeah. It well, was they like, said that in camp too about Arnold. Like some of his stuff that shines is he throws people open, mm -hmm. and some quarterbacks and he trusts his receivers that, to go do and that. Some yeah. wait for people to get open. I do think Dylan waits for people to get open. Yeah. Which you can win in college with that and yeah. win highly. And he probably won a lot at UCF doing that. Right. I just don't know if it's going to be, and that's the thing, in his intermediate and his mid-game and short-game stuff, Gabriel looked great. I think he had one throw over the middle to Anthony that was a little bit behind him that we all said if it's in front of him, he probably runs for 10, 15 more yards. Yeah, short post. Yeah. And I, I want to see, but... Other than that, like he looked great in just terms of managing the offense and moving up the field. Maybe it is just one of those things where we're going to hit on the deep ball here and there, but it's not going to be something that we're going to sit back and rely on. So One of the things I want to see is efficiency. Um, we had a lot of efficiency. Now we're playing a tougher opponent. I want to see more continued efficiency. I know we're going to be in vanilla schemes and vanilla play calling for the most part just because you're in the early part of the season, if nothing else. But still, I want to see us finishing drives, and I want to see defensively us getting off the field. Um, getting off the field sooner rather than later. If How you good have, did that feel last week? It feels so good. And if you're efficient, you get off the field quickly. Sometimes you'll have to be aggressive, which might mean that it's a six-play drive, but you still got off the field, and you took a chance that could have been 
get off the field in three plays, and maybe you got the ball back through a turnover. I want to see a good combination of that. One thing that is hopeful, again, for me, from what I've seen in the difference between last year and this year, last year, if you have one guy out of play, out of position, and I bet we had one guy out of position defensively half the time. I think that's a safe, maybe an underestimation. It's getting exploited. Um, <laughs> that is a 10 against 11 situation. If you've got 11 guys doing their job, then you've got 11 against 11, and with our talent, that's a complete advantage to us. And so we weren't able to see that last year because we had a guy out of, at least a guy out of position. If we can keep everyone doing their job the way they're supposed to, then you're going to get that efficiency that you want. You trust your teammates and let them execute the way that they need to. You do your job, and great things happen. Jay, what are you looking for? Anything specific outside of what we already covered? No, not really. Um, game one, I was looking for a more dominant offensive line performance in terms of creating seams for running backs. So I want to see more of that because, I, to me, that just opens up the, the passing game even more. And it was a combination, some of just not creating those holes and or playing that many running backs. I don't know if, you know, everyone kind of learns their own timing of when to hit a hole or not to hit a hole. And you also need to be in a groove as a running back. So when you're, when you're interchanging people so often and everyone got six to eight carries or whatever, I don't know that you necessarily get in a groove. Mm. I think we won't play five or six running backs this week. How much um, salt chuck do you think we see? I hope we see a bunch. I hope to we me see personally. a bunch. Too. I think we me. probably will. I think we actually. see. I think we see. He's already been cleared to play. Mm -hmm. So and Le Lebby did allude to the fact that as we go down the stretch, and and we'll see how this game starts off. Um, hopefully, we get to that point where we're playing four or five five guys playing the depth that we have. Um, Lebby did allude to the fact that he is going to that a lot of what they're going to do this season is going to be who's got the hot hand, who's the guy that you guys are feeling out that that is going to make that impact or is making that impact from the get. Um, so we'll I'd, see. I'd love to hear that because I think that's really the key in a lot of these situations. And I don't know if I talked about this in the prior pod, if this is something I've been just talking to people in the inner week, but um, when you're an offensive coach you don't necessarily know what it is that's working. You just know it's working. And so you've got a running back who's getting good yardage against a team. What, for whatever reason, he's in sync. He's having a great day. He is working with his offensive line in sync, and it is making production. Stick with what's working. For whatever reason, his uh, stride is not being picked up by that defense properly, and he's getting success. Stick with it. And so I, I do th I love hearing that out of Levy because I think if you get a player who's bust a big run, you're you're going to feed him the ball more. And for whatever reason, he's having success. Let him have that success. Yep. That may be what determines what looks like the leading rusher game in and game out is a guy that has early success. And Salchuk is definitely the potential in terms of his athletic ability to have that kind of success. If he could bust a, you know, what was our longest run last week like? 16 yards yeah. or something. 16 yeah. yards, yeah. So if you can get a 40-yard run, uh, things are working. Stick with it. Well, and Sawchuck's the type of back, if he can get to that second level, there's always a chance he can take it. Yeah. I mean, he was an elite high school Olympic-style 60-meter sprinter. Mm -hmm. And that's about the perfect length to run that's on what a football you want. field. That's what you want. You want him to... When, I mean, remember back to the great backs, and that's and that not just an OU's case, but in all the great backs, you see it when they get to that secondary, and like, and you've seen it when we've been on defense. You're like, we're not catching this guy. Yeah. It doesn't matter angles or not, we're not going to catch this guy. One more extra he's gone. gear. Yeah. He's he's got it. Yeah. So who? So all that said, does till we get the start on Saturday? Yeah, I, I mean, I Probably think so. Saul Chuck's going to be quote rusty, right? He'll yeah. he'll get. Yeah, Saul Chuck's in. clearly not starting. But no. who, he'll, so he'll back to the original in. question: Who's who's getting the first handoff of of the game? Uh, I think it's Tawi Walker again. I think, I think so, too. so too. Well, it was Marcus Major last time, but no, it wasn't. It, it was Tawi was was Walker. It was Tawi. We all thought Marcus. Yeah. Tawi got Marcus that whole first drive. Yep. He did, didn't he? Okay. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. You probably couldn't see from the upper deck 
on the west side that it was 29 could you, could you and not 24. That? I can clearly see With that. binoculars? From the end zone. What nope. did you use? Okay. Just my eyeballs. Interesting. Lucas does mouse. wear glasses. Interesting. Yeah. Section 16, row 72, come say hi. Okay. Yeah. Then defensively, if, if what I want to see is just a continuation of what we saw week one, just there were no major busts. Yeah. There were minor busts. Right. Right? And um, even when there were, somebody else made the play. Right. And, and that was great to see. Just keep building off that, honestly. I got a second listener question. All right. This comes from Kerry, and he asked me this after our pregame pod before the first game. Okay. And this is a reactionary answer, okay? okay? There's no, you don't need to think about it for very long, just your first thoughts. Who would you say is the best player on the team? And this isn't potential. This is current best player on the entire team. Go. Let me think about it. I can't be, re- <laughs> I can't be reactionary. I got to run through the roll decks. Of Offense f- and there. defense. Yes, the best player on the on the squad, and not per potential like Jackson. That's a Arnold, hard say. question. It is a hard question. It, it was a hard question. Gavin Sasha. I'll go with a different Gavin. I'll go Freeman. Ooh. No, I'm sorry. I meant Gavin Freeman. Oh, I apologize. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. We were talking about Sawchuck. I meant Freeman. Okay. Sorry. Um, I meant Freeman. That's a that's a great answer. Uh, I'm gonna say Bowman. That was the consensus. That was a, that was a close second. Billy Bowman. Yeah. Was he? I think he asked this question to six or eight people, and almost all but one yeah. said Billy Bowman. Right now. Right now. And he said, "That's sad for us." No. Because our safety is our best player. No. And I said, "Was it not, sad when Roy Williams yeah, was that's our Roy best Williams. player?" That's what I said. I said it wasn't sad when Roy Williams was covering the entire field. Yeah, San Francisco was upset that Ronnie Lott was on their team. We (laughs) we proved last year that when Bowman was out, our defense was got as bad as it was already. Oh yeah, it got way worse when he was when he was out for those three games because he took a kickoff because he shouldn't be doing that. I didn't want to get too into the weeds of anything, but like if I really sat down and thought about it, I could have gone with like a Guyton. Yeah. Or it's just not a sexy position to right. pick well, as I mean, your best you could, player. You could, I mean, you if could he's pick. the best player on the team, he's the best player yeah, on the team. Yeah, but Guyton legitimately might be a top 10 draft pick. Next yeah, right, yeah. This is a base on Billy potential. Bowman, Billy Bowman won't be a top 10. This, wasn't, this is the best player currently yeah, on yeah. the team. Playing. I mean. Like, I, it could be Jackson Arnold. That's where that. Could, yeah, but, yeah, no, no, but no, no. That's no. potential. Potential, for right. sure. So I'm talking, he, his if, question was on the team. Where I, where I have to take issue Correct. with the question is the game of football is – such a unique specialization sport it's not fair to ask that question it's like a lineman's never going to win the heisman right and so you're looking at players that are going to be skilled positions when you answer this question whereas it could very well be someone on the o-line or d-line and that's a very legitimate answer you could say creed humphrey was the best player on the team in 2020 right i mean and well, so, same thing like and you, so that's where essentially pj right? that's why i think it's a good question what, what did he say did he have an answer no he didn't have an answer so I think Bowman is a is a very legitimate answer, and I don't and I fully expect by the end of the year that won't be the answer, right? Because on potential and where everyone's going to head, and I don't mean it's going to be next necessarily Arnold. Hell, it might be Dylan Gabriel. He may be MVP, and we're all saying this guy yeah, this be. guy led us to a promised land. The guy of, might finish big third in the Heisman. We don't know. We don't know. But as far as production on the field, consistency, leadership. A guy you know you can depend on is Billy Bowman. That's what I said. I like it. I like Freeman, too. I like that answer. And, of course, now he asked that question before the first game. We already already knew we saw the potential we saw. of Freeman, but That's we true. saw in this first game some tremendous play out of Freeman. Um, exciting play out of Freeman. That's just... That's really exciting to have a guy you know, because we've been up against those guys where you're just scared for him to get the ball. Yeah, I would say preseason... If I was only looking at one side of the ball for sure, there's a good chance I would have said Bowman. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Bowman I mean, was yeah. Bowman was. Freeman my flip might flop be second. our next version of a locket. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Who I mean, he could be that guy that doesn't yeah. look. He's an unassuming. Yeah. He's a smaller guy. He's super fast, but he breaks away from people. Well, he's got all the moves. He's like a total get, package for that position. If we can get play out of other height. receivers and and pull pressure away from him, he's the kind of guy that is lethal and he only may get five touches and vice versa and those five touches are are three times either scoring or setting up scores vice versa because 
if defenses have to start keying in on this this small slot Everything wide, wide receiver, up. now you're going to start leaving single coverage on Andrew six Anthony. foot four Nick Anderson, <laughs> six foot six Gibson, yep. Speeds or Andre Anthony. Yeah, that's it's a good it's problem a great to have. position yep. to be in. A, another testament to what we've already seen and, and hopes for the future out of uh, Emmett. Jones, Emmett Jones, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, not her, Smith. Not Dean, Smith. Dean, Dean Blevins said Emmett Smith three times on the radio <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> and I'll so, take Emmett I wanted Smith to scream at him on the radio. Be like, it's so Emmett somewhere. Jones. Out of Emmett Jones, um, it's just very impressive to see what he's been able to do, both recruiting and now in, in early stages of player development. That's a real positive sign. It's Great wild. listener questions. This is a little side topic, but to me, in this day of age – with how big the recruiting landscape is and how many different um, companies follow it. That's their whole gig to do. All this video, all this social media, for someone to be as dominant as he was in high school, albeit fairly small Oklahoma high school football, middle of the road high school football, to have one offer, one Division One offer texas tech texas tech and and, and then they and, and they then, fired their staff and told them don't have any communication and they yeah they just yeah. ghosted him well i mean is he is he Wes walker he's well west walker with speed yeah i mean west walker was fast too he wasn't but, this but at fast. least back then <laughs> he wasn't this at fast. least back then you didn't have um multi-million dollar companies that this yeah. was their whole job yeah is to find these people right right and even then ou was interested in them they just and he was also, where did Freeman go to high school? Heritage Hall. Heritage Hall. Oh, same, yeah. Yeah. So, he's Wes Walker. He is Wes Walker. <laughs> so real, real quick. I mean, I and, hope he's Wes Walker. And maybe just to, to tail this off, but, uh, and we'll do, again, reactionary, don't need a whole lot about it, but offense, defense, who, you, who are you guys looking for this week um, as your players to watch? Off yeah. Offense for me, I'm going to have to go Sachuk. I'd love to see something from him. Defense, I'm going to go like Justin that. Harrington. I want to see him really kind of. God, you just named both my man crushes. Consume that. I want to see him consume that role of the quote unquote cheetah and, yeah. and see what he can do uh, in that position. I'd like to see Canick get some quality minutes back to the concept of efficiency, doing his job the way he needs to do it. Um, I really believe in him. Um, we'll see. Uh, he's. I think he's somebody that's in a position where his job's up for grabs. So I'd like to see big things out of him. But if he can't produce, it's not going to be him. Offensively, um, I'd like to see Gabriel continue what he's done and maybe improve on the shortcomings that we've seen. Yep. Our season is going to turn on how good our quarterback is. And if if he can continue with what he's done so far, that's really good signs. If he can't, we may be headed towards a little difficulty. Um, I mean, if things really sputtered, we'd be in a quarterback controversy in, in six or seven games. So I, that's important for us. I've got two offensive guys. I want to see if Andrell Anthony can get behind the defense of SMU like he did against Arkansas State. Yeah. Um, because they have better athletes at SMU. They, they did pretty well in the transfer portal this offseason. They brought a bunch of – power five players in to join their squad that transferred from other schools. So I want to see if he can still get behind those guys. And then can Jaden Gibson continue to catch the ball as well as he did after game one, after last season in the spring game of not looking like he had great hands, he went the opposite way and made two great catches in the last game. So will he get in the game a little bit sooner because he's proven – the, in the likes he can do it, um, or or is he still going to be the, you know, third string receiver that comes in a role guy? And then yeah. defense, I want to see Pearson knock the crap out of people. Still, I love watching a safety obliterate guys. He looks yeah. like he wants to. So he, he definitely wants to. And what's great and about not, it? I don't is, want to see the penalty. No, no, no. The no, last no, time, exactly. He was he was just barely out of bounds. Barely the out of bounds. Took one foot out of bounds. Yep. He leveled him. That that stuff happens, especially first game when you're all amped up. I want to see I want to see him knock the crap out of some more people legally, and and, and not just legally, but also I want to see him more of going after a guy and making the hit to finish a play, not the hit to try and 
punish? M well, not just to, like, oh, I this is the sensational hit, and it doesn't finish the play, like Buki. Uh, I, I want a guy who actually finishes a play strong in a D1 type of situation, not this worked in high school, Yeah, and I'm, I'm I don't satisfied think he, I don't think he's it. a shoulder-throwing hitter. He's, yeah, he's a guy. He's launched the body, wrap him up at the same time, and yeah, knock, him, I agree. knock him back. This is a good little um, side segue to a question I wanted to ask you guys. If McCullough can't go this weekend, which I don't suspect that he does, there's not necessarily a need for him to get out there quicker from his minor ankle injury. But if you have to put someone else over there at the Cheetah to replace Harrington from time to time, do you want to see Pearson move to Cheetah and Bowman? Bowen. Bowen, Bowen is yep. back there with Bowman? That's exactly. Or right. do you want to see Bowen over at Cheetah, and no. you keep Pearson and Bowman. No, I want, to, I want the I want the former of the two. Yep. Uh, Bowen is a Bowen is our long term safety who is going to be playing that spot. So you want Pearson? I want to see Pearson move down to Cheetah, and I want to see Bowen Bowen move up top. I like that. With I, agree. I like that a lot. I like that too. That's a good question. Well, let's talk about SMU a little bit. Jay, you've been doing some deep dive and some homework. You know, uh, Lucas talked about it. Uh, expand upon that a little bit of the depth that they've got, the, the quality um, talent that they've been able to bring in to Highland Park. Yes, yeah, like Lucas said, for the last couple of years, they've kind of became uh, transfer you, SMU. They're one of the first ones to really hit Sonny it Dykes, hard. Sonny Dykes really established yep. that while he was there. Yep, and he did like and he, he did did TCU, TCU last year, yep. right? <laughs> and um, he kind of made it a cool place for all the local kids that decided to leave Texas if they weren't happy or wanted to come home, come home SMU, right? And I want to say something before you get into this, because that's something that I've wondered about and predicted a little bit. I think SMU is in a great position to do exactly that. They're in a hotbed of recruiting. They are a very rich school, even though they're a very small school. They've got a lot of money in the, in the world of NIL. They should be able to entice a lot of guys to come there um, at the margin. After the fact. After the fact, or, yes, after the I mean, fact, they, they primarily. The well, it'll help them, too, yeah. move into a bigger conference. <laughs> and now they can do it legally. <laughs> right. And and it's moving to a bigger conference. So now, and that's one of the reasons I thought they would have excelled in any big conference if they would have gone to the Big 12. But in, in the new ACC lineup, they might be able to attract guys and retain guys or, or pull them back as boomerangs to say, look, come to your home market. We've got tons of money in Dallas to help support you and, and 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 get you I mean as much notoriety as you can to get to the next level and they could be someone who wreaks a lot of havoc in that league going forward so let's talk about this year and what they've got all right so at quarterback they got Preston Stone he was a kid that Lincoln kicked the tires on a little bit um, so you know for what it's worth Lincoln does know what he's looking at for quarterbacks so the kid can sling it um, at running back, there's three players that some fans might recognize. Um, Jalen Knighton was a kid that was once committed to OU, ended up decommitting and going to Miami, a speedster back. He's there. LJ Johnson Jr., um, again, we were in recruiting battle for. He ended up going to A&M. Now he's back at SMU. And there's one name that not a lot of people have talked about, but a former five-star who we put all of our chips in on to only burn us like two days before signing day, Kamar Wheaton. Mm. Wheaton who, is there? Kamar Wheaton's wow. at SMU. The Alabama Wheaton. The Alabama Wheaton. Wow. Wow. Who actually got snaps in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a pretty deep running back room for an SMU. Right? Wheaton yeah. is third string. It hadn't been that deep in 40 right. years since Craig James. and, and Exactly. Uh, who was that other guy? Um no, no, I don't know what Eric happened. Eric Dickerson. Dickerson. Yeah. I don't think Wheaton played last week, so I don't know if he's suiting up for this week, but I just thought it was interesting that he is on the roster. Yeah. And that was when huh. we had Bulaware, and we were all chips in, oh, and yeah. Wheaton was hard to read, hard to communicate with, but we thought he was ours, and two days before sign day, he's, you yeah. know, picked yeah, That was so crazy. And then we had, of course, nobody else to go after because we were all in. Yeah. Um, at wide receiver... Um, the only person that people might recognize is Jordan Hudson. Um, he's a TCU transfer from last year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure he was a high four-star kid. But overall, athletically at wide receiver, they've got dudes. So this isn't going to be a deal where 
they're going to win some 50-50 balls, and they are going to get open. And we can't let them get behind us. Um, on the offensive line, not that these are names anyone's going to know, but uh, they got a, a Texas transfer as a starter, an Auburn transfer that's a starter, a Missouri transfer that's a starter. And defensively, they've got uh, Corey Roberson, who was on OU, I think, for two seasons maybe. Mm-hmm. And he transferred to SMU. Um, they got two Miami transfers on the D-line. Um, God, do they have any homegrown kids? <laughs> no, it's not many. Uh, their linebackers are, like, from some small schools, like smaller schools like Temple and Liberty. Uh, in the secondary, they got a West Virginia transfer, a Stanford transfer. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, they're they're loaded up on Division One talent. For sure, Power Five talent, I should say, not not Division One. Yeah, but so they've got athletes. S- Absolutely, S- to you. Yeah, that, that's that's really important, and that and that you know back to the wisdom of Vegas and the wisdom of crowds and and the the smart money flowing in, that is probably being reflected in all of that. And I'm going to guess that they probably didn't spend much of the off season preparing for Louisiana Tech. Yeah, probably not. This is their circle. Now, game. what's good? This is their circle. What's game. good is. Just like Butch uh, Jones said, if you're if you're looking at our tape from last year, you might be making mistakes, right? Because we are a different team. Hopefully, we continue to be a different team with talent and speed and positioning and everything. But I bet you're right. I bet they spent a lot of time working on us. If nothing else, the coaching staff is going to spend a lot yeah. of time working on us. Yeah. So they've they've got several players that we wanted. At one point in time, so they are there are OU caliber players that are in that's on SMU Pre- previous positions. OU caliber players. Yeah, that's right. But position in, in a few key positions. So we need to be back to efficiency. We got to be in position because these are the kind of guys that will burn you if you let somebody like Wheaton out in space. You just put seven points oh, yeah. on J- the board. Jalen Knighton can can abs- He hits the yeah. corner. He is a burner. Yeah, I mean he's. You're not going to run him no. down from a from an out of position position. So that's that's real important to think about. That uh, good insights there on SMU. Well, let's let's transition a little bit into some predictions, and we'll start with the locks of the week. The realest deal, locks of the week. So we've. Started off not great, Lucas. You were two and one last week. Congrats, wow. Lucas. Well Sixty-seven yeah. percent. Should have been three and zero, oh, but Tech choked it off. Let's seventeen points in the first quarter, and they couldn't manage anything else until the very end of the game. Hey, hey that, everything runs through joke. Lubbock. Yeah, everything, everything runs, through, runs Lubbock. through Lubbock, according to uh, <laughs> Joey McGuire. Well, you did well. The rest of us did poorly. We were one and three again. So as a group, we're nine and fifteen, thirty-eight percent. This is the week we turn it all around. I've got three locks that are absolute must-bet locks. These can't miss. I'm glad you're confident. Um, I am so confident. I put at least a dollar on each of these. Um, so I've got OU giving 15 and a half. I think that is um, – I'm, I'm just – I looked at a lot of these lines, and I felt like, wow, I really know something no one else knows, and I'm sure <laughs> I'm wrong. And that's one of them. So I like OU – to cover here's an another one and this is i hopefully not my my heart talking hopefully it's my brain i like arizona state giving three or getting three against oklahoma state i think that going out there to to tempe it's going to be a difficult situation for an oklahoma state team that struggled against central arkansas down to their third string quarterback who's going to be the starter i guess I don't 107 know. 107 degrees at kickoff. It's going to be really, really hot. They're going to be very distracted by all the, the nice things to look at in Arizona State. So I, I think Arizona State is going to cover. And my last one is maybe some real, uh, no, I don't believe, I don't believe, Dion, uh, Nebraska getting three and a half. So I like Nebraska getting three and a half. And I like it straight up because TCU is not that good. Colorado had a sensational win, but there is a lot of rat poison floating around in the situation. But Nebraska's good? Nebraska's solid. Mm -hmm. But here's the deal. I'm going to circle back to history on this one. Colorado beating TCU is the same as in 2005 TCU beating Oklahoma. TCU beats Oklahoma after OU goes and loses 
remarkably big time in the national championship the year before, just like TCU did last year. TCU rolls into town and upsets OU, and it's a big headline moment. What happened in the second game to CCU? They lost to SMU the next game. They won all the rest of their games. (laughs) <laughs> but they did lose to SMU, who OU plays this time. History is just just playing a game with us here. I so I'm taking Nebraska. I see you're going with that because I, I do think that Colorado put an extreme emphasis on coming out and winning this first game because it's huge. It's done everything that they thought it would do to win this first game. The publicity, the hype, the Heisman hype, all of it. Or top I, 25 I, team now. They're ranked I 22. can see a letdown for sure. And I do think Rule knows what he's doing. I'm a big fan of Rule. Agreed. The more he's been gone from Baylor, the even bigger fan of Rule I am. Because I thought Aranda was a pretty good coach. And the further he gets away from Rule players, the worse Aranda looks like he knows what he's doing. So I, I see where you're coming out with that. That's my logic. All right, who wants to go next? I've got OU minus 15 and a half as well. Mm. Nice. I think um, we'll, get, we'll get to our scores. But I think SMU will score. But I don't think their defense can stop our offense. And just a quick correction, OU 16 and a half. No, they're 15 nope, and a half. it's 15 and a half. It moved to 15 and a half. But on our sh- on our pick sheet, it's, oh, so we're not so going. We're not going, we're going with the, line, we're going with the latest. Right now. Oh, we're going with latest. The, oh. The, the line moved. Yep. The line moved. That's why Arizona State's three. I'm going all Big 12. I've got oh. uh, Kansas State minus 16 and a half against Troy. Um, I think what they went, 45 nothing against some no rum dum the other day. Um, I'm a big climbing fan. Uh, I don't. I don't honestly know much about Troy this season, so who knows? But that line doesn't seem very big. I think Kansas State's offense is pretty decent, and I think the defense can hold Troy. And then my final one, maybe because they screwed me last week, <laughs> but I'm going Oregon minus six and a half against Texas Tech, mainly because they screwed me last week. I don't like Tech. I'm not, I don't. Oregon had a big win. Real big win against Portland State, but, yep. but I, I like all your picks. Other than the tortilla throwing, they'll have to dodge a little bit of that. <laughs> they but, might not, only but, after the first uh, kickoff. Yeah, but I've got Oregon minus six and a half. I like your picks. I really do. I do, too. Um, yeah, well, uh, so a, a bit of uh, consistency here. I have OU. I had them on the on the pick sheet as minus 16 and a half. If it's moved, even stronger lock. At a minus, Double down. That one point, you're all in. Double down, baby. Um, I've got Notre Dame, minus seven and a half. I, I was iffy on this pick, and the, but their quarterback play is so much better this year than what it's been um, with Hardman. So I've got them minus seven and a half against North Carolina State. And then last pick uh, for me is going to be UCF, uh, minus three and a half against Boise State. UCF put up a lot of points. I didn't look at it a whole lot. I, I just – I did it, watch uh, – quite a bit of that game and they've got talent they can definitely move the ball and i don't think boise state is what boise state no was. agreed and agreed so, i like that pick that was one of my honorable mentions yeah jay oh man so this is bad we're all agreeing on it the is picks. i know i'm fade the crap out of us i'm also <laughs> trying to avoid he's got smu and colorado uh, i also like the oregon pick it just honestly the number 13 team in the country only six and a half at Tech. They scored 81 points last I just, weekend. I, again, it's, to a team that just lost to Wyoming. Yeah. Yeah, I just I think you can win by a touchdown there. Yeah. I will also. Yeah, a lot easier at six and a half than seven and a half for sure. Um, gosh, really, I'm just gonna try and be slightly different. Um, I like Utah minus six and a half against a Baylor team. I do, too. That lost and lost their starting quarterback. Yeah, lost their starting quarterback's a key deal. Oh, did they in the game? Uh Uh-huh. Really? And Rising doesn't even have to be back for Utah to be good. Yeah. I mean, clearly. I mean, if Utah can can whip up on Florida, they can beat Yeah, yeah, a Baylor team. Um, Let's see, my third pick. I'm scared to go OU because you guys have scared me off. I am going to try... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with who's playing quarterback for Kansas. I it, think Daniels is back. Daniels is back. Well, I don't know. He had he had back issues last week and uh. Bean played, but Bean's pretty solid. I'm gonna take Kansas at home minus three and a half. 
Friday night game against Illinois. I like that. That's I like that too. I like that. I think Illinois is one of these teams you can probably pick against until the cows come home and you're going to be happy more often than you're not. Very so. Big 12 centric. Yes, very much picks. so. Very <laughs> much so. Interesting. Well, let's let's look at score predictions. Um, who wants to lead us off there? I've got mine locked and loaded. All right, go. Let's go Oklahoma. All right. 45. Wait. Uh-huh. Oh, sorry. SMU 21. Okay. I've got close to that. I've got Oklahoma 48. Uh, same, same. Two field goals. Same or a missed extra last. point. Nope. Two field goals again. <laughs> I've got uh, SMU 20. Also two field goals. Mm. I think they're going to be good enough to, to get into the uh, the Oklahoma territory and at least get some chances to kick some field goals. I think we'll hold well defensively, but I do think they, they do kick a couple field goals. What do you got, Jay? 41-24. All right. Barely covering there. Barely covering, but covering. That's consistent with not picking them. I'm very s- similar to you guys. I've got OU 45, SMU 17. I think each team settles for a field goal. Um, I think that OU dominates, and I, I don't really look for this game to really be in doubt very much. Um, uh, obviously, that's my hope talking as well as my brain. But I, I do think that... Just like you guys are saying, OU is scoring in the 40s. They're going to have a hard time holding us. And if we're doing what we should be doing, we should be holding them to just a couple of touchdowns. Does Jackson Arnold take snaps in this game? Yes. Situationally? Or because it's in hand? I think situationally. You think he's part of the – they got a package? Like a belldozer type situation. I think he's part of goal line. Uh, He's 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 too good not to. He's a sneaky good – uh, field vision. Yeah. When so I, I saw I, when I saw him line up and and a we heard that he told Lubby he wants to run the ball. B when I saw him line up for the designed run and latch on to one of his guards to move the line and take his hole. That showed me all I needed. Yeah. To he see. he let his blocker engage and and, then and he was ready to go to either side. And then like went. What we're so saying. I mean I totally I think, in control. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So I mean I I do think. If that doesn't tell Lebby and the coaching staff everything you need to know about what you should be or could be doing with him this year, I don't know what else will. So I, I'm, I like that a lot. I've got a little. I guess the only reason I'm not sold on that in terms of a prediction is I'm a little concerned that Lebby actually is willing to do it. I think it's the right move. Um, I don't know if you need to. I don't know if you need to, but it's also very lethal. So I'd like seeing it from a couple standpoints. One, if you're a defense and Jackson Arnold lines up, if you've watched a little bit of tape, you know what you're up against. You know this guy can run and put the ball in the end zone. You also know he can find a receiver. And find someone. And I like it from the standpoint, this is my second point here, I like it from the standpoint that it presents something that teams down the road like Texas will have to prepare for. Because... If you're intending to do something like that on a first and five from the five-yard line against Texas, get it in practice so that they've had to scheme for it and you've actually had some game speed and preparation for it so that you can give him the training to say, look, see the field, see what the options are, and do either the run or the dump-off pass. It could set up a great play down the road where if you run this a few times where the whole play design is – no matter what, you run the ball because down the road, it's only first and five or second and five. Down the road, you're going to pass the ball on that dump-off pass. It could be lethal in a critical game. I don't think he gets in in a first and five, second and five situation. I think <clears throat> it might be a fourth and two at the opposing 40, and you're outside of field goal range. I could see that. You're not going to punt. Well, it's the same, it's the same thought, and right? You just you put him out there, and he, he looks at the defense. He looks at the sideline. It's, they give him it's the go-ahead. or two. Yeah, yeah, it's either run or throw. And, I mean, I wouldn't put it past – I would hope – I mean, I've been a Lebby detractor. I would like to see a, even a, like a Tim Tebow pop pass situation. Absolutely. Where Blake Smith – we didn't really talk about him in the post game, uh-huh. but I thought, I thought Stogner didn't really do much. Uh, obviously, in the passing game, he didn't catch a pass. But Blake Smith looks legitimate to me. Um, I don't know that he's the next Mark Andrews or anything like that. But I think he can be a very serviceable tight end. In a fourth and two, 
That right. could be amazing. Yeah. That, that, I mean, that, you fake that's the, a touchdown. You take the step forward to fake the run. Yep. You jump back. You throw it over the middle for five yards, and he goes for 20. Yep. You can, I mean, if the safeties are playing up, you might throw it over their heads, and he, he walks in the end zone. Your best situation from the, 40. From, from the OU strategic standpoint might be do exactly that, and your call is no matter what, pass the ball. Now, maybe not on fourth and two. But you're going to say, we're going to make you prepare for this. Yep. And then the next one, you're fourth and two against Texas, and you just run the ball for 40 yards yeah, because like, they all yeah. drop back to cover. And I like it even more in your situation, Lucas, the, the, the ball on the opposing 40 on a third and three and bringing that in and saying – It doesn't matter. The two and say, hey, like we're, we're going to go for it on fourth no matter what. We have something already set up. We're going to do this, so let's go in and try something here. Um, I don't know. It's – But, again, I don't know – I don't know that they will. Yeah, it's something I would like to see, but I also that, against SMU, like you may just want, say, they "Well, look like they want to do it." It's though. fourth and two at the plus forty. Let's go ahead and just hand it off to running back. We should be able to get well, the yards. And it depends on the situation. You're probably not doing it when you're up seven to three, right. but you're probably doing it if you're up fourteen to three or twenty-one to to, yep. to seven I hope or whatever. So. Trying yeah. to kind of would, put it out of reach. Trying to put it out of reach. You, that's your chance to really extend the game in your favor in a way that that kind of puts it. Um, so much in your favor that that they may not be able to catch you if it, you're successful. So you said you said the T word, Steve. Um, just kind of looking ahead, how do you guys see the the game in Tuscaloosa playing out this weekend? Oh boy, um, man. I'm how team did, always Texas lose. We're not saying who you're. Rooting yeah, but how, for. yeah. How do you think? It how do you go? think it's going to? How do you think it'll go? So I'll give you my rooting for. My rooting for is root for Texas because it's great for OU, and if they lose, it's great for OU. Um, as far as where I think it'll go, I think we saw a lot of fits and starts out of both teams in their games against lesser opponents. Um, I Texas gave them a great game last year, but Alabama won, so I don't know how strong that that bulletin board effect is in terms of motivation for Alabama. I didn't see any of the Alabama quarterback play from last weekend. Now, Jay know. did. He was the first... Alabama quarterback in history to throw for three touchdowns and run for two touchdowns in a single game. But how did, how did he look? Man, he looked pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying I mean, like I don't that. Know. I don't, that's an obviously great, I don't, that's a great stat line. I mean, I don't like think he from, was, you know, I think he's kind of like a, like a Jalen Hurts, honestly. So. Manager of sorts. I mean, I. He can take off. I mean, he can, he can take it 80. I hate to know? give a prediction. Or he can take it. For I'll four, give the gut. Give yeah. So I'll say I think that Texas gives them a game and wins narrowly down the stretch. I've got Alabama covering um, on mine. I don't know. As we watch the Texas game here, uh, I do think a little bit of what we saw against Rice was some look ahead from Texas of we're just this Rice is a, a means to an end to get to week two. Um, and then Texas realized they needed to actually kind of turn it up a little bit to, to get where they wanted to be. Um, have seen some stuff on Sark this week where we, we talked about it in the preseason with our team about showing stuff and not showing stuff. I think Sark is going to have to show some stuff this week to get what he wants, <laughs> oh, yeah. obviously. Um, they better be all in. I want to I mean, see. They're playing Alabama. There's no reason. Yeah. You, you you should be all in because uh, honestly, if oh if they're you, not holding anything back. If you got a returning no quarterback. If you're Texas and you think you are what you are, yeah. Um, and you go and you lose, your your season is still within your hands moving forward into Big Twelve play. Yeah. And if you win, it's really, it's really in, in your hands. hands. Um, yeah. You you almost had to get you almost had to get out of jail free card yep. like OU did in 2017 when you go and beat Ohio State on mm-hmm. the road. Um, and then lose to Iowa State. I, I do think I think Texas is going to be overmatched on the offensive line. Um, I think that Alabama defensively is going to really consume them. Um, we'll see what Ewers is and see what he can do. I'd love a little bit of disparity there coming out of that if he doesn't perform well. At the same time, I, I am with Steve from a rooting factor. I, I texted you guys this a couple days ago. I would love nothing more than to see Texas and Oklahoma be 5-0 and going to the Cotton Bowl mm. um, and putting that game on the pedestal that it deserves to be on and that it has been on in the past. And the thing that I've been wanting so much since those mid-2000s is these two 
Goliaths of college football meeting on a neutral on a neutral ground. Um, so I'd love to see Texas pull out, pull out the victory and then us go curb stomp them in uh, in four weeks in, in Dallas. So that all being said, I think Alabama's going to win. I think they're going to cover the the whatever the seven and a half. I'm I'm always for Texas losing unless it's a situation where them beating a Big Twelve team at the end of the season puts us in the championship game because we've lost to somebody else or some, somewhere along those lines. Um, I hope Texas goes 1-11 this season. They already won the first game. I hope they lose them all. That's how I will always be. What do you think will happen? I think Bama wins 10-14 uh, to 14 range. 10-14 to 14 range, so covering. So I, I'm not going to be surprised at all if that happens. I guess I'd be really surprised if Texas – wins by anything more than eking something out um that said i would expect that alabama has not spent the time on texas that texas has spent on alabama why, so, why do you say that they both played rum dums to start the season i think that alabama's got a lot of other things to look at i don't think they look at texas the same way but i think that alabama especially sark is going to or texas is going to look at alabama especially sark is going to look at alabama as a white whale that if he can beat them, it establishes him in a way that is really important. So I think for selfish reasons, they're going to, they will have focused on Alabama in a way, and it may not be to their advantage. That isn't always to your advantage, but it could be, and that they've done more preparation, very Alabama specific, and it may work to OU's advantage, because he may look at his schedule and say, I don't have to worry about a whole lot outside of Alabama. It may be CFP level type of preparation that they've done. For yeah. this game. Does it help that Sark was there three years ago on that staff? It probably, many years ago it, was? It, it, it probably affects it. It may hurt or it may help. It does for me say. in the terms of, to just to counterpoint you, I think Saban takes a whole lot of pride in not losing to his former disciples. That's a good point. And very he's, good point. he's only lost done it once. twice. It's like 28-2, oh, it and two, I think. Jimbo yeah. was one... Um, and Kirby, Kirby, and Kirby, yeah. and Kirby. So I think he takes a whole lot of pride in that. Yeah. You combine that with, I mean, there's just been very few teams in the last decade that just walks in to Alabama Stadium and Absolutely. takes a W. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Was that last year that he lost to Jimbo? I don't remember. Honestly. No, two. It was a couple years. Two I years think. ago, in the at A and M. Was it? Yeah, 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 two years ago. I don't remember. Yeah, two years ago. Because they almost beat them um, last year. No, I think year. it was both last year. Didn't didn't no no la- didn't no, no, no. kick a field goal? To- no, they, they they that was the big. It was two years ago that 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 the in in College Station, um, they lost in Tuscaloosa. The kick A and M did, and the they almost they, they could have won the damn game. Yeah. Um, I also think there's a combination of whether you think this is something that can be true or not. Alabama has slipped down just a hair, just a notch from where they were, and they might be on a, you know, we never went on anywhere a revenge tour. Yep. And there's no better place than to put a former staff member in a team that... Or they could be a down team a... And a fan base, and even nationally, who all said, well, you were stays in that game, and Texas really won that game last yeah. year. That's true, right? But they also could be down a notch, and that means they're down a notch. They could be, and they're beatable. And they're also playing a new conference member next year, mm-hmm. so they may want to. We're going to set the tone. Oh, I don't think there's any we're doubt gonna, about we're it. They want to win on this Texas game. and yeah, and show them what it's going to be like when they join the conference oh, next year. I, I don't think there's any doubt about all. This of that. all being said, it sucks. We can't watch that game. It does suck. Yeah. We'll catch the end of it. Um, this, I guess, it's the only redeeming factor in a 5 p.m. kickoff. Um, it's going to be just early enough that it's still pretty hot, but we'll be in the shade. Uh, we'll be in the shade eventually, won't we? We'll be in the shade like at the end of the first quarter. I think we'll be in. The, yeah, I think when we'll be are in you going to get in the shade? Second quarter, probably, Lucas? probably, at, right after halftime. You think it'll be that quick? Yeah. Okay. Maybe mid third. Weather I'll, actually is boating well for, for Saturday. It's it's looking like it won't it's be too like bad. It's looking like it's going to be not bad. It's going to be pretty. I'll good. take Bama. I just. Uh, man, like I said, there's just not very many teams that, that stroll into Alabama well, that's, and win. That's a great pick. I mean, there's no doubt about it. That's this the money. I don't know pick anything about the point spread, or you know, I don't. I don't know if Bama will cover the touchdown. Pick um, them to win. That's safe. That's good. But yeah, I just that seems like seems like a high high hill to climb. Is there a chance that one or both of those teams 
is remarkably not the team they think they're going to be, and which one is it? It's Texas. Or both. It's Texas, right? Texas might not be very good at all, right? I mean, they be ju- they they may just be mediocre. What were they last year? Seven and five. Eight and eight four. And f- eight and five. They lost to Washington in the bowl. Yeah, eight, eight and four. And yeah, finished. Eight yeah. And five, yeah, yeah. So so they could be about the same. I mean, there's no guarantee that they're back, baby. Yeah. They've so been play, they've they been play? hyped plenty of other years and yeah. falling apart. They don't play Oklahoma State this year, do they? Um, I, I think, don't think so. I think they dodged think that so. bullet because I think, yeah. They do, have a, a, they do have a tougher schedule than we do. Well, know. Oklahoma State has has Texas's number relative in the last, yeah, there's, what, five? Yeah. I From do what we see years. at Oklahoma State, I'd really be surprised. I do, surprised do, think, Kansas. I do yeah. think they play Kansas State and – They do. Um, and Texas Tech and Baylor. And Tech and Baylor, yeah. Yeah, they they do. Um, so they've got they've got a tough road. They play. I tell you, a trap game uh, to to beat all trap games. Looking ahead is Kansas uh, in at home. Uh, Kansas in Austin the week before OU Texas. That is a game that could could be really bad for Texas. I'm not sure. Um, anything else to cover about the upcoming game, SMU? We got OU covering. All of us do. Some of us have it as a lock. I'm excited for the game. We got a nighttime kickoff. We'll have a post game after it. Until then, Boomer. Sooner. Sooner.